I'm a filmmaker, and I love to take audiences on journeys through time and scale, making the invisible visible, and telling stories that celebrate life. Using the art of time lapse and slow motion cinematography, I can stretch our worldview by capturing imagery that's either too slow, too fast, too small, or too vast for the human eye to see. Wonder and awe drives us to explore because we're surrounded by things we can't see. And that triggers our imagination, leading us to the intersection between art, science, and technology. Have you ever wondered what it would be like to experience the world from the point of view of a flower or a hummingbird? When we can experience life through their perspective, it expands your vision, opens your heart, unveiling the mysteries of life. And that, my friends, is truly transformational. When we experience wonder, your whole mind and body is arrested by something larger than yourself. You become what you behold. These intense neurological storms of pleasure leave all kinds of residual benefits. We're left with increased feelings of well-being, compassion, and creativity. It enables us to adjust our perception of time, influence decision-making, and we become more patient more willing to help other people, and that makes life more satisfying. It builds resiliency. It turns out that blowing your mind is a medicinal and it's good for the soul. We can lose our ego and commune with the divine. Wonder and awe inspires us and brings us into the present moment. It makes people feel rich in time. When was the last time you felt rich in time? People always ask, did I grow up in nature? Well, not exactly. As a kid growing up in Brooklyn, I didn't experience nature because if my parents didn't do it, well, neither did I. I think racing popsicle sticks down the gutter was my first white water experience. My parents were Holocaust survivors. They were in Auschwitz. And they met after the war in a relocation camp in Germany. They knew each other for two weeks before they decided to get married. Friends who they just met stood in for their parents to walk them down the aisle. They came to America with my older sister. They were resilient. And living under their roof, I saw how grateful they were for every blessing that came their way. Food on the table, a roof over their heads, steady job. Most importantly, the gift of being able to have children. To them, that was heaven on earth. Seeing life through the lens of gratitude had a profound effect on me. I grew up wanting to make the world a better place and to fight for social justice. So I headed off to UCLA, majoring in political science and history. But how could I study the French Revolution when the anti-war protests were happening outside my classroom? The students rebelled because they wanted to stop an unjust war. And like my parents, I needed to bear witness in order to tell that story. There were no camera phones back then, so I quickly learned photography, and I documented the protests, including the FBI undercover agents who were there taking photos of us and arresting the student leaders. Documenting the police brutality was my way to resist, and these were my very first photographs. So I handed in these black and white photo essays to my political science class, which was a lot easier for me than writing a paper, and I found my voice. I fell in love with photography and filmmaking, we're going through a similar period of breakdown and breakthrough that we had during the repressive Nixon era. The silver lining is that it spawned Earth Day and the liberation movements for women and people of color. Today the battleground is consciousness, grabbing your attention, your eyeballs. Politicians can do it by being dark, vulgar, and outrageous and pushing our fear buttons. We need to counter that with beauty and wonder, shining a light into the darkness, connecting and opening our hearts to shift behavior and to celebrate life. We need to be resilient and make our voices heard. Filmmaking enabled me to explore nature's universal rhythms and patterns that awaken the deepest part of my soul. And I met my greatest teacher. She taught me the language of composition, color, and movement. She taught me how to live a creative and sustainable life. Mother Nature doesn't waste a single molecule and never takes more than what she needs. 
So when I graduated, I moved to a little town called Elk in Northern California. I wanted to shoot high resolution 35 millimeter movie film, but I didn't have much money, but I did have time and a sense of wonder. So I retrofitted these old movie cameras built in the 30s to film one frame at a time, time lapse. These cameras all had heavy AC powered animation motors. Filming time lapse on 35 had never been done before, and I turned it into an art form and a new addition to our visual vocabulary. So I started to chase the light, filming time lapse clouds and fog and shadows moving through the forest and shafts of light in desert canyons and flowers who seduced me with their color, taste, touch, and aroma. But more than that, I learned that the flower is the greatest biological invention that changed life on Earth. Plants evolved a strategy to put their DNA into a flower, which becomes a seed, a fruit, a package of energy that allowed small, warm-blooded mammals to evolve. Without flowers, we wouldn't be here. Let's take a look at life from their point of view. Flowering plants don't have legs or wings to find a mate, so they seduce these love messengers, pollinators, bees, bats, hummingbirds, butterflies. Flowers are like advertising billboards saying, come get me, my biological clock is ticking and I need to make love. The real story of nature is not only survival of the fittest, but also survival of the kindest. The feminine story of nature is all about relationships. It's about partnering, networking, regeneration, giving birth, nurturing, creating ecosystems that flourish without greed. It's why they call it Mother Nature. <laughs> So what did I learn from filming flowers for all these years? Beauty engages our senses. It's a reawakening, a homecoming to our inner self. Beauty and seduction are nature's tool for survival because we protect what we love. That's why babies and kittens are cute. And puppies are cute. That's my dog Wally when he was a puppy. And your kids are cute. And if they weren't cute, you'd toss them out with the bathwater. But you don't, because it's a bond called unconditional love. And when your kids grow up, your grandchildren are cute. We are hardwired to love. Love is a force of energy that wants to flourish. And what a miracle that nature invented reproduction for DNA to move forward. Life is locked in a universal struggle against entropy, because everything in the universe wears out. Life flows through us from generation to generation. We truly stand on the shoulders of our ancestors. So if pollination is the foundation of life, I began to wonder what can support plants? What do plants need besides food and water? They need soil. And what can decompose rock and organic matter to make soil? Its largest organism on the planet 
it's everywhere. It lives on every continent. It's even inside of you. It can heal us, it can feed us, and it can clean up the atmosphere. It can even shift your consciousness. And it's right under your feet. I'm talking about mycelium, the single cell network that is the root system for budding mushrooms. So I made a film on mushrooms, well not on mushrooms, about mushrooms, called Fantastic Fungi, The Magic Beneath Us. Mushroom mycelium is the beginning of life, the grand recyclers of nature, and without them, we would choke on organic matter. We evolved from fungi. Our DNA is more closely related to fungi than any other kingdom, and they help fight viruses. Penicillin has saved more lives than any other medicine in human history. We're like plants and fungi, creating communities and networks for life to flourish. Brie Larson is the voice of the mushrooms, so don't mess with Mother Nature. As you're walking through, there's about 300 miles of fungi under every footstep that you take, and that's all over the world. And they form these massive links. It's like a big web just growing through the forest. So we often think of kin recognition as an animal behavior. Humans, you know, we love our babies. We know it's our baby and we're gonna look after that baby. Well, we never thought that plants could do that, but we're finding in our research that plants can recognize their own kin. So these mother trees recognize their kin through their mycorrhizal networks. The mother tree and the baby seedlings are sending signals talking to each other. When they're connected together and carbon is moving between plants, the trees are supporting the weaker ones. If she knows that there's pests around and that she's under danger, she will increase her competitive environment towards her own babies so that they regenerate further away. It's a magical thing. And this could not happen without the fungi. Underground connections and feeling connected to a living universe are two ways that the mushrooms are speaking to us, and the message is the same. Communities flourish when we work together. Life is interdependent. We want and need emotional connections and experiences. World care equals self-care. And scientific studies show that nature can be a healing modality. I'm working to bring digital nature into healthcare and hospitality. This doesn't replace taking a walk in the woods, but it can inspire you to engage with nature. Currently, I'm collaborating with the Jacobs Medical Center at UC San Diego in all 250 rooms. We want to see how nature's imagery can help patients heal by asking them a very simple question. Where in the world do you want to go to be healed? And your choices are forest, ocean, desert, or flowers. We're giving patients the power of choice when choice has been taken away. We're hoping for positive health outcomes, like lowering blood pressure, heart and respiration rates, reducing anxiety and addiction for painkillers, and better sleep and shorter hospital stays. Science continues to bear out what I learned from my years of personal experience. Immersion in nature increases creativity, kindness, and compassion, because we are nature. I believe in using digital nature as a bridge technology to reconnect people with the spirit and essence of their soul. And that brings us back to wonder, the portal that connects us to feeling love. We can awaken to the reality that this really could be heaven on earth if we learn to live in harmony with nature and love and protect our one and only home by creating a more sustainable and compassionate world for us to celebrate life.